Hey guys, VBAD here with another V Plays, and I am flying at you literally with a B17G. Why are we doing this? Well, it's not the most riveting gameplay to be flying around ultra heavy bombers like the B17, but we were a little harsh on the player that was flying the B17 when I was doing my 109Z video yesterday, and I felt that it was only fair that with all the critiques of how they were playing that aircraft wrong, we should probably talk about how to play these types of bombers correctly. Now you'll see we already spawn at 7200 feet and we're flying at around 186 miles an hour, 185. Let's dip the nose. Highly recommend if you're going to be flying one of these fortress bombers, you're going to want to get down to probably around 6500 feet, maybe lower. I know, I know, you're going to open yourself up to attack from enemy aircraft, but already look at my speed. I'm at 300 miles an hour, and I'm zooming into the target. Why is speed important in a bomber aircraft? Speed's important in a bomber aircraft because you are going to be dropping a strip of bombs. Two strips of eight bombs. So as we're dropping this strip, I'm going to want to make sure I can hit about two zones with these. So there's one two sections of ground targets and now I'm actually going to slam on the brakes and drop all of these little bit of a zigzag on these targets and at this altitude I should be able to get good spread and bam single pass capture that is what you should be able to do in an aircraft like this now I might start climbing now build up some of my altitude maybe reduce my airspeed because now I got a really long reload time this thing's like a 90 second well 80 second reload I think and we're just gonna climb up to a higher altitude why uh, well one it'll increase our protection just a little bit we're also flying off axis a little bit but at the same time I'm also lining up for my next attack run I'm looking for that strip of two targets I can hit in a row with my first volley of bombs and I'm also looking for the lineup for the big part of the mining plant this is uh this is a great target for us to go after at the same time we're also have we also have the ability to dip the nose and get some airspeed so i'm actually going to slam on the brakes right here let my boost regen i'm going to get down to a real slow idle uh, this is also a defensive posture as well if a heavy tries to come at me they're going to overtake my aircraft and i can just unload on them with my guns so we are a bit of a gunboat, so we can use that to our advantage too. So let's dip the nose. Let's get the airspeed up. I think eh, it's not the best running, but I think it's going to be better than what I'm typically doing here. There we go. I think we might be able to get this set off. I'm not sure how effective it's going to end up being here. That should be enough. All right, brakes on. This is also going to help with the AA fire a little bit. Let's throw on the boost, maybe get a little bit more. I think we got both of those structures there. Can we get this whole middle? Yeah, single pass. So that is what we can do in this airplane. Uh, there is a, an aircraft down below us, but I'm okay with that. I would like to be able to use these tail gunners to highlight how strong they can be, but as you can see, we've taken both mining plants. I've already said how many times have I said that taking the mining plants is going to be the most important thing you can do. If you can take the mining plants, you're essentially going to control the rest of the battle. So I'm actually going to be a little bit dumb here, and I'm going to fly right towards where the enemy is probably going to be fighting, and I'm going to get a little bit lower, so that way I can take advantage of the other strength this aircraft has. Hit points and guns. We have a lot of damage resistance and damage resistance inherent to this aircraft, inherent to this aircraft, so we can get in there and tussle with the best of them. Sometimes if I can't finish taking a sight because I'm on reload, but there's just a whisker of capture left, I'll hop into the tail gunners and take out some of the defense aircraft that might be operating in that zone, because I definitely have the firepower to be able to do that. I and mean, we're looking at a potential of being able to get Eh, about five 50 cal machine guns on target at any given time and unlike any 50 cals you might have on an aircraft with fixed forward firing weapons i actually have the ability to pretty much guarantee a hit with these guns do you have an aircraft down below us the yak 7 i don't think he's coming up to meet us we're looking for targets right now and i'm seeing that most of the ground targets are essentially taken at this point so Let's see if there's any good run-ins here. Not particularly. So, 
Maybe something's gonna regen in a minute. Kind of loiter, I guess. We do have an aircraft coming in to meet us, though. Let's hop into the tail gunner view. And just start throwing some rounds out. There we go. They were sighted in just a little bit there. Oh, looks like we do have a ground targets regened. Two ground targets have regened. I'm not sure I'm going to be able to drop on both of them, but I can definitely drop on at least one. So let's get the speed up. Uh, I don't know if they even need me for this one. Maybe I can get this strip to spread far enough. Not quite. We'll drop another string of it. At this point, we're just adding insult to injury anyways, so... Yeah. And air supremacy achieved. But... Why? Because we were able to take both of those mining plants. Like I said, not the most riveting gameplay, but... This is how you fly a B-17, guys. And if I was in a Doe 217M, or I was in a Ju-288... I'd be doing the same type of thing. The bomb pattern might be a little bit different. With the German bombers, you get to drop singular bombs instead of dropping strips of bombs. If I was doing the B-32, it would have been a single strip of bombs that would have gone across all of those sections the exact same way. But that's that's how you operate these things. Uh, they're really good at for taking mining plants. They're really good for being able to take military facilities. Uh, that's what this thing is meant to do. Uh, that's what most bombers are meant to do as well. Going after the airfield is probably not your best bet. Uh, it's not a it's not a bad move if it's the only site that has any type of bonuses. So, you know, the rest are all garrisons. But really, you're there to take out those big hardened structures, and you can do it in mass, especially with just the absolute raw damage potential. Now, I mentioned before going with the bomb site is a good bet for a lot of bomber aircraft and the reason I went with the bomber site specifically is because I can increase the damage inflicted by the bombs. Also, I was seeing a little bit of odd spread pattern to the bombs as I was dropping. So instead of dropping and it would still stagger the bombs with the bomb drop, but I was seeing them even when I was going on the main section of the mining plant, that long rectangle, the special target, I've had bombs, even though the line was centered, I'd have bombs go outside of the actual rectangle. So there's just some odd behavior. Now, why is flying lower more accurate? I mean, we already mentioned that the speed allows you to be able to kind of spread out your, your, bombs, your bomb pattern, your carpet, if you would. But... Envision a cone coming out the bottom of your aircraft, okay? Kind of like a flashlight. The further away you get from the target, the wider the beam's going to be, and that's where your bombs can possibly land. It's the CEP, the circular air probability. What you want to do is you want to get that circle as tight as you can on the target, so that way you can ensure that even if the bomb's going to be outside of uh, its normal center drop, it'll still be inside the circle, and you've mitigated how wide the circle is. Bombsite helps that as well, and while this may allow you to be able to, to bomb at higher altitude because you got a little bit of a tighter circle, you are going to struggle to do what we did, which is single pass captures. Now, where we opened up that if there was an enemy heavy that really wanted to take us out, that we were vulnerable, yeah, we absolutely were vulnerable, but we still probably would have got the bombs off, and if we would have survived until they hit the ground, even if I died, we just captured the mine with one aircraft and yeah we made a, we might have traded our life for it but guess what we get to regen and we're probably already on a 90 second cooldown anyways so we just go to a different site and we've made that heavy fighter essentially useless for that period of time he, what he took us out now what we were already going to be useless for a minute and a half now we just had to wait for like a 20 second respawn timer 15 second respawn timer so yeah uh crew skills were actually playing to build benefits off of the equipment we're running. So we went with Protection Expert. This is going to increase the durability and resistance modules by 40%. And um, we actually have on here, probably not the best equipment in the world. Uh, we went with the Ultimate Engine Protection, which I do think is a good option. Uh, but the Reinforced Skin, while it is helpful, helpful for getting tolerance to AA fire, the reinforced airframe will increase our hit points. It won't negatively affect our airspeed, and it will also give us benefits for fighting off some of the AA as well. Uh, 
The advantage for the reinforced skin, though, is that we could roll for tolerance to AA guns in both categories for both the first roll and the second roll. If you can see uh, at the bottom of this list, I can't move the mouse, otherwise it'll, it'll deselect it, but... Yeah, that's what we're doing there. And then for the gunner skills, I've already mentioned, I think these three skills are your best if you're going to be firing in a, in a manual defensive measure. Uh, why go with quick reflexes? Because it makes the sight hone in quicker, which then makes it so it's easier to get critical chance. So you're just maximizing the effect. They actually pair together. They aren't competing with one another. Uh, and then I do manually control my guns a lot, so we're actually getting really good range when I do manual control with this thing, and it's also increasing crit chance, uh, and it reduces some of the potential for energy uh, injury to the gunners themselves with some of the perks I rolled. So you can actually see these guns can hit, can hit out to 2,700 feet. That's nearly 1,000 meters, so... Very strong potential here with this thing to actually be, able to be a killing platform as well. And like I said, we got strong survivability and damage resistance, 1,760 hit points at tier 6. And we've reduced chances for critical damage to the engines by 70%, wings by 23%, tolerance to AA, AA guns by 25 tail doesn't take damage 30%, 80% uh, resistant to fire, 78% resistance to incoming damage now i don't know what the 78 and 80 for the fire and resistance to damage is, and maybe stumpy the paladin will tell me because he's actually figured this out i think that's a percentage of damage reduction add in there defensive fire expert and now you understand why it's such a pain to kill one of these things when they're specialized because they're really taking advantage of reducing all of the incoming damage and just being an absolute brick on the battlefield i'm not real fast but i'm very effective and i'm probably going to deter you just based on the sheer damage potential coming out of this aircraft and when i slam on the brakes and you overshoot me but i still got 550 cals on you you're going to feel it especially when you start losing critical components anyways Hopefully you guys enjoyed this video despite it being bomber replay, but I figured we kind of owed it to that other guy when we were giving him a hard time about flying his bomber incorrectly. I feel like this is the best way to do it. Results kind of speak for themselves as well. And if you've flown bombers enough, you'll know that either you have games like this or you have games where you're getting hard countered and the score is essentially reversed because you didn't get a chance to do anything. I actually... I will show you, I had a match right before this where I got an even higher score, uh, but the enemy had two player bombers, one of which was a specialized B-32, and he just rickrolled me because I failed to be able to capture the mine in a single pass. But you can see, for the damage numbers, we were actually comparable on the damage numbers for ground targets, so... Uh, but going back to this battle, because I figure we might as well highlight that... Uh, we were able to do 30,000 damage, take out eight ground targets. I mean, we didn't, we weren't doing anything spectacular, but we were able to be very effective when we went into that zone. So anyways, hopefully this has helped some of you guys out. And as always, I'll catch you guys on the next one.